What is up ladies and gentlemen? During this year we have seen record inflation, rising interest rates, wars in Ukraine and fuel and cost of living increases that sent the market into turmoil. But we kept on investing during all of this and today we're going to take a look at every one of our investments we made this year and how they've done profits and losses, rands and cents and it's been pretty unexpected. So welcome back to Casual Cash. Alright, so as you know, this year has seen red for a lot of portfolios. We started off rosy but quickly turned sour. Record high inflation, raising of interest rates and the cherry on top was Russia's invasion of Ukraine that raised fuel prices and cost of living across the world. Next thing you know, from January to June, the major market indexes were diving by 23% and a lot of people sold their shares. But around this time, we put out a video saying that we thought these times were a good opportunity to buy in at discounted prices. And today, well, we're going to see just how right or wrong we were. So we kept buying during the year and today we're going to list every single investment we made in 2022 showing the exact rands and cents of profits and losses so far and at the end of the episode I'll share one opportunity I may have missed out on. It's been eye opening so let's get right into it. First off this is the list of all the shares we have bought in 2022 so far. So look through them and think for yourself which of them you think are in a profit or in a loss for this year. Then as we take a look at each of them, we'll see if we're right. Okay, let's get right into it and start with our banks. When this year started, we decided to buy into banks because while higher interest rates would hit other companies negatively, this would result in higher earnings and income for the banks. So we started consistently buying shares into First Rand Bank, Capitec Bank, Ned Bank, and Standard Bank. I wasn't too fond on ABSA. In total, we made 28 individual investments across all banks over a period of about four months. So here are the results. As you can see, almost all of these investments are profitable. That's because we bought in while the market was going down and interest rates were going up. And slowly as the market improves and banks profits rise, we're seeing some green. In fact, Standard Bank just released a 33% earnings growth and an interim dividend, and I'm sure the other banks will be something similar. So in total, these investments are in profit, with Capitec at a profit of 0.4%, First Rand a profit of about 5%, NetBank is a profit of 2.3%, and Standard Bank at a profit of 5.82%. And we'll see how they go over the rest of the year. Next, let's check out our ETFs. ETFs are great to invest in during a negative market because usually they tend to typically track the market when it comes back up. We invested in four RAND ETFs and one in US dollars. These are our RAND ETFs. The Satrix JC Top 40, the FTSE 100 in the UK, the S&P 500 in the US and the Satrix Property Portfolio. Currently, our Satrix Property Portfolio is down 1.24% with 8% dividends, but as you can see, our latest investments are turning green, so we'll see how it goes. Then our three index funds. For these, we have been putting 100 Rand into each of them monthly, no matter what, since January. So to look at the profits of each investment is interesting because it's a snapshot of the markets each month. The latest months are mostly green and the beginning of the year mostly red. Clearly, January to April was when the markets were going down, but May to August are when they started rising and began bringing the investments into overall profits. It just shows the benefits of investing consistently and dollar cost averaging. So, the JSC Top 40 is up 0.08%, the FTSE 100 is up 0.74%, and the Core Shares S&P 500 is up by about 8% positive. And as the markets are slowly climbing, I'm hoping that this trend continues. Then we have our USD ETF, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 Growth Fund. Here we are down 0.13%. I think my mistake here was investing too much at once at the beginning instead of evenly dollar cost averaging, because as you can see, March is the only red month, but brings down all of the profits after it, and some are in profit as much as over 20%. So lesson learned, but this fund is up 15% in the last month, so hopefully we'll be green soon. Sticking with dollars, we can look at our only other dollar holding, which is Tesla. 
We invested in March after a dip and we're currently in a profit of 8.45%. This stock swings based on either good results or Elon Musk's Twitter fuse. So we'll see which happens next. Then we have Sunlum. Another interesting one, they released some unhappy results this year because as an insurance company they were subject to the riots and unrest in South Africa last year and had to pay out once off claims relating to it. I thought this was great because the share price went down about 13% and gave an opportunity to buy more and get higher dividends. After all, that was likely a once off occurrence that wouldn't affect long term profitability. So as you can see, we bought additional shares from May to July, which are profitable overall, some as much as about 13%, but still our overall position is down 4%. Again, dollar cost averaging here would have been better, but over the last month is up about 9%. Then storage, a bit of a mixed bag. I do like this company. We made a few extra investments this year, some positive, some slightly negative. Profitable for this year overall, uh, but down half a percent in total, which I'm not worried about. The dividends here are about 8% and are well worth it. Lastly, we have our single UK holding, which is SSE. This is a renewable energy power company, which I think is a growth industry, and by all accounts so far, it seems to be with 4% profit in the last month that we've had it. Pretty happy with that. And guys, that is it. Those are the profits and losses for my Easy Equities portfolio for 2022 so far. The two lessons that I have learned that I want to share with you is that what Warren Buffett said about be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful seems to have worked well at least so far this year. So hopefully it continues. And the other is that dollar cost averaging is a great way to even out risk and buying costs. Okay, but what opportunity did I perhaps miss out on in this year? Well, I've been bearish or negative on Tungela Resources, and since then coal prices have gone up along with their share price and dividends. So if I had invested earlier, I would have made some money. But honestly, I'm still not too happy to buy them. I still feel eventually the other shoe will drop, and it just takes coal, pl uh, coal price fluctuations to change, and I don't want to buy in high for when or if that happens. And guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you appreciate the insights and can use some of the information and learnings for your own portfolios. And if you did enjoy it, please leave a like on the video. Any questions, you're welcome to leave in the comments, which I'll answer. And if you want to see more from this portfolio, as well as other investing information and market updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. But until then, I'll see you guys next time, as always, on Casual Cash. Cheers.